yesterday i mean that day for yesterday if still someone has some issue uh, please let us know so that we will fix that all right so uh, sir you there yes sir okay so uh, we can start sir because yes sir and uh, by the way uh, uh, today today we supposed to have last day of the payment of the uh, workshop because those who want to get the certificate today is the last day but since it was one day gap so it will has been extended till tomorrow so till tomorrow those who want to get the certificate of the program please apply all right thank you very much over to you sir okay sir. welcome everyone let's continue the session here we have left in the previous session we have covered the list okay vector and list we have i think completed or not the vector we have finished or the list also only the vector am i audible to all yeah okay so uh, we have finished the vector or list what i think the list we have not finished or the vector only yes. sir vector only vector only okay so let me share my screen with you uh, i getting my screen now yes so okay thanks and now i just a minute yes yes so <clears throat> today we start with list so first i explain what is list look at here on the screen i have given the definition of the list what is list basically i have described it list are the are objects which contain elements of different types like numbers string vectors character logical another list inside it and uh, in list we could put different sort of elements okay in vector we always put a one class single class of element but in list we could put multiple class of the elements and every element of the list is treated as sub list okay a list also contain matrix we can we can put in matrix just a moment there is some work which is running over there so in a list we could uh, keep vectors in list we could keep sub list also in list we could keep matrix array data frame everything so in list we could uh, <coughs> put so many uh, data types in a list so i just explain how to create a list first we see for making a list a function is list 
as for making a vector, we write the small c. So for this, So, suppose we are going to make a list and the list name I am giving here L1 this is the object name for the list. And uh, I have function list list. This is a function for creating a list. Okay. As we were using C in a vector for combine, here we have to write the list. Now I am making a list. And just show you the list. I print the list. So you will see. List will always print vertically. And we have seen in the, our previous session the vector always print in a horizontal form. So here you see this is our list in the every element I explained you is a sub list of a list. So this is a sub list one. And in this sub list, there is first element is two only. And this is sublist two. In sublist two, we have first element is six and sublist three. So every element in the list is a sublist. Okay. If I want to access any element, so if I have to access the element fourth, so I will write the same way as we have used in uh, that uh, vector if I want to change the value I can change the value in this way no problem sorry I'll just do it okay so if I show you the list again you will see the value has changed now there is a 13 instead of line Okay. Okay, I increase the size of it. Are you getting now? Now size is okay, Manisha. Sir, yes, sir. So here I have changed the value for the fourth element, which is thirteen. Now, which was nine, now it is thirteen. So you will see if I show you that, then. 2, 6, 1, and then 13 instead of 9. Previously, it was 9. Now, this fourth element is 13. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Uh, I have explained you. In list, we could put vectors. We could put sublist also in the list. We could put the matrix, everything. But uh, these are the some advantages of list. But there is some disadvantage of list also. We could not use an arithmetical operation. No? We could not use this list in an arithmetical operation. What it? So this is the disadvantage of the list. So I am making another list where I am using different data types. Uh, one I am using a vector 5 is to 10. Okay, this is the integer vector you already know. Second, I am using some fruits name, a vector with these things.
okay but i am making one logical vector i just written on the two and uh, just okay I just run it and I will show you how to look at this. This is our first of this, this vector 5 to 10. Got it? Vector is always horizontal. List is always vertical. There is another vector which is again horizontal. There is another vector which is logical. One more vector I write here, uh, not the vector. I write uh, I write some sub list in this again. So this list I am writing two point five comma uh, okay. uh, This again I will show you. You see, in vector, uh, when we write something in quotes, so it also convert this in quotes. But here in list, it does not happen. So this is the first sublist, second sublist, third sublist, and fourth sublist. First element is this, and the fourth sublist is second. In the fourth sublist, second sub sublist is, and the list every element is a sublist. So here in this list, it is it is a sublist. In this sublist, this one also a sublist of this list, and this one also a sublist of this list. So it is the sub sublist 2.5 in the India. So you see fourth, first, and fourth. What it does that make sense to everyone? Is any anybody has any doubt? Yeah. Okay. Now I want to access some element. You know? I want to access apple. So how could I access it? Uh, whenever I will write the name of the uh, sublist, I have to use the double square bracket. It is the second sublist. And for the final element, that is the apple, that is the index three, mango, banana, apple. So I will write in single square bracket. So I will get the apple. Does that make sense to you? Okay. If you have to sort out the India, then what will you write? Can you write on this chat box? For India, what would be the command? Yeah. Are you sure, Manisha? Anu, O2, correct. L2. Double square bracket. There is the fourth sub list, and there is a second element. Run this India. Got it? Okay. So in this way, we could find it out. If you want to substitute something instead of this, then just put the assign button, write whatever you want. Okay. We could give the names to sublist. The sublist one in this vector, we give some name. Here we give, we could give name here also, here also. So how we could give the names? So there is a function names. And we want to give these names to the list too, L2. Right, right. 
On the right hand side, I will write the vector. I will use the vector for writing down the name of this. If you see, the first is a vector, vector in the class of integer 5 to 10. So I just write a name for this first one, integer. Okay. Second name I want. It is the name of the fruits. So I just give the name fruits. The integer, the spelling is not correct, I think. The integer may be better. Integer. And the third one is logical. So I just love the logic. The fourth name is a, it's a mixed 2.5 in India. It is a list. So we could write the list also. Then put it and I run it. Now I will show you the LP. Look at this. Now instead of this uh, index, uh, which previously there was an index, now instead of this, we are getting this. Uh, List and the name integer fruit log list list. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. And we could access the elements through the name also. If I want to access the element of from log, I could write the log. Uh, if I just run this, so I will get locked to. There is only one element, so I have not given the another element. That means uh, L2. I want from one. One is uh, our integer. Okay. Integer. Integer I want to access seven. So it is the third one. Seven is the third one. Sorry. There it also I have taken from seven. What uh, seven is uh, one, two, three, third, three. Sorry. Three. This, this is the seven. So in the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So seven is the third integer, uh, third index over there. So in this way, we could give the name to the list. We could check the list. We could uh, merge the list also. Suppose I am making, I have made the first list and the second list. You already know that. Now I want to merge these two lists in one list. Uh, that is I had three. And this list I want to merge. So for there is a simple function list we have to apply in the L1, comma, L2. Whatever the list you want to merge, you could merge in this way. We are getting this. Sorry, just a moment. Uh, this. So look at this. So we are getting here all the L3. The first, first two, six, one, thirteen. This was our first one. Where is that one? This one. L one. L one. We had it on this one. So that is our one. And uh, here, see, L one and L two. This the one. L three was the one sublist, and one sublist, one sub sublist. In this way, it is given. This is the second sublist starts from here. In the second sublist, the integer sub sublist, and the first element is five, second is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are the first uh, element index it shows all this. Understand? I will explain one more thing. You see, but just I am saying that, that this is the 48 is the 43rd element of this vector. So this number also is represent the index of the first element. 
it may be changed. It may be changed because I have taken this much to the 48. Uh, the number would be same, but the sequence may change. Number 43 is the 48 element, uh, the value of 48. Uh, 43 would be always be a 48. Okay. It depends on the, if you have taken the small uh, windows, then with more rows would be there, but the indexing would be same. Indexing will not change. Okay. So these are the, something about the list, and uh, we could convert the list in vector also. Let's show you the list one. And I run this. So it is the list I have. And I want to convert this in a vector. So I just write a v1. Uh, I'm giving the new name because uh, I'm making it vector. So the function is very simple. That is the unlist. Or we could unlist it. Uh, unlist l1. Just run this and I will show you the v1. So it's a vector now. I have converted that list in a vector. If I see the class for the l1. So it is the list. If I ask the class for the V1, it is a numeric. Numeric is the vector class. Okay, does that make sense for everyone? Is that any any doubt anyone has about the list? Yeah. Is there any doubt to anyone? Okay. Regarding the class, sir, uh, yeah. it's written numeric. If uh, the number is the characters are stored, it would be character, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. It will be character. If it is a character, then it would be a character. If a character list in a character form, then it would be a character. Okay. Sir, I, I could convert. I could convert that list also. Don't worry. I unlist. Uh, Unlist uh, L2. You see what happens. You see. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These are the, our first vector. And now it is the character because the in the sublist, you see there are some lists which are the character. So everything would be a character if you are uh, doing it this way. What it? Yeah. Yes. Sir, what is the benefits for using list? What are the benefits? List has many benefits because we could not put a sub vector in a vector. Can we put? No, sir. So there is a list is applicable whenever we require this sort of things. When we have to merge so many data frames, hundreds of data frames all together, then we require this list function also. Okay, sir. Uh, because in, in a list, we could merge so many data frames also. No? In a list, we could put any any type of data, any data type we could put in a list. Okay. List has no restriction about the data types. Only the drawback is that we could not do any mathematical calculation with list. Is it clear to all? Yes, sir. And the next day you will see the use of this. In the matrix, I will explain you the use of the list. One of the use of the list, I will explain you. Now, we have a next uh, data type, which is uh, matrix. Matrix is a array of elements you know, in a row and column. It is the arrangement of element in a row and columns. We could not find out the value of a matrix. It is just the arrangement of the elements. It may be numeric arrangement, it may be some strings also would be. But uh, we are having the rectangular matrix. It is in a rectangular form. Uh, and uh, we see how we could create the matrix. So how many of you know about the matrix? I, I ask how many of you don't know about the matrix? It would be better. 
If you don't know, please do write on the chat box so I could explain more about the matrix. Then we'll proceed to it. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Please write without any hesitation. No problem. Okay, so let me first explain what is matrix. Okay, so most of you don't know because the most of the students are having the, some other branches. Everybody has not read the mathematics in uh, the higher classes, but they change their subjects. So they didn't have any knowledge about the matrix. So no problem, we clear it. Don't worry. Okay, so uh, we talk about the matrix and just I change the uh, resize it so it will not disturb us. And here we are going to study about the matrix. It is an arrangement. It is an array. Array means arrangement, no? array of elements. Means in rectangular form. Rectangular form, row and columns, okay? When we write a matrix, but here not in R, it would be like that. Manually, if you write a matrix and you use the two square bracket and in between you write the elements, whatever the elements you want. It is the order of the matrix is three by three. Three is the number of row R1, R2, R3, and C1, C2, C3. So these are the columns. So there are the three columns and three rows. So three by three matrix, the row first write and the column later on. So order is three by three. Order of the matrix is three by three. Okay. In this way, you could make a matrix work two by one, uh, two by three. Sorry. This is the two rows and three columns. These are the orders of the matrix. And we have the same rows and the columns, number of rows and the number of columns are same. Then it these sort of matrix are called the square matrix. Square. Matrix. That does make sense to everyone. Now understand up to now. Yeah. Okay. Is there any doubt? Yeah. Uh, so it is uh, 
same number of row and column, then it is called a square matrix. I explained this. So we see uh, there are few things. Um, just a moment. And uh, now we create a matrix here. In the matrix index, what we have? First, I explain you the matrix index. The match is first thing is a data. Second is the number of row and row. Uh, third is an call. If you a call is not compulsory, but if you want to write, you could write. Then by row equal to true or false, whatever you write, you could write there. And final. Dim names. So these are the attributes we have. First attribute is the data, and second attribute is the end row. So these two are the required attributes. Okay. Minimum these two attributes to be filled. Other may be default. Okay. So I just uh, create one uh, uh, matrix. And the function is very simple. Like uh, uh, we, we know that in the uh, give m1 name, object name. Okay, uh, it should be capital, so better for us. We are going to make a matrix. And the data I am taking, uh, like uh, I take a data C, I will take the data in the vector. So that is the three comma, 12,5,7,10,13,1,0,1,2,3,4,5,6,7,8,9,10,11,12,13,14,15,16,17,18,19,20,21,22,23,24,25,26,27,28,29,30,31,32,33,34,35,36,37,38,39,40,41,42,43,
this sequence. What? This one. But if I want this sequence in this way, 3, 12, then 5, then 7, this way, then what I have to do? So I will show you. I just need to add one more argument. That is the by row equal to true. And I run this. So I first there is that. I clear this also, you could better understand. Now you compare both the matrix, the difference between both. Compare it. Are you getting? Uh, Emmanuel, that is not compulsory. This that is not a required argument. Only two required argument. One is data, and second is the n row. Other arg arguments, if we require, you write. Otherwise, there is no need to write. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, uh, we have uh, written later on when we required this. Otherwise, you don't have to write. Now I will tell you the dim names also. Dim names is the name of row and the name of column. Dimension names. Dim names means dimension names. Rows and columns are the dimension. So I will write down the, uh, I just enter here. And I write the dim names. And the dim names we have to use the list. Because in vector we could not put the sub vector. Because we have to use two vector, one for row and one for column for naming. As you have seen, always we use the vector for naming. Here you have seen there is a vector. So in this way, we have to use two vectors, one for row and one for column. So for that, we require some list in which we could put both vectors. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. And that is a list and list I'm writing first vector for the rows. There are two rows. So I am giving R1, row one and two. This is my row names. Now column names, I'm making another vector. It is the C1, first column, C2, second column. C3, third column, and finally C4, fourth column. And I run this. So, are you getting it? Got it. One vector we have taken for the row, another vector we have taken for the column. When you take the vector for the row, it should be first and the second would be for the column. Is there any doubt? No? One meal. Uh, have you got it now? There are the four attributes I have explained you. Sir, so can you please repeat uh, dim names? Uh, I lost it. Uh, why we use list over there? Uh, you see here, uh, list we are using because we have to put two vectors. One for row and the one for column. We have to use two vector for the naming. Understand? Can't we, we write to, uh, directly? Row for like... row. No, we could not put in a vector. If you put in a okay. vector, so uh, the separate vector we have to use for the row and the separate for the column. Yeah. Got it? So in a vector, we could not put two vector. We That's could true. not put a sub vector in a vector. Can we put it? No. No. We have not done that. Huh? 
So in the list, we could put the sub vector and the sub list, everything we could put in a list. Okay. So we are using list first. In list, we are using vectors. Okay. Can we write, sir, uh, like C1, C2, C3, C4 first and then R1, R2? Uh, is it going to do the same thing? Or we first we have to write a row and then... Uh... First we have to write a row. Okay. Okay, sir. Is sir, it clear to all? Yes, sir. Please, will you repeat the uh, term by row, sir? By row. By row is very, very simple. Yes. I explained it earlier. You see here in this syntax, there is no by row. Okay? Yes, sir. And when I created this matrix, you see the arrangement of elements at the column wise. 3, then 12. 3, 12. So 12 is there. After yes. three in the column wise, then five, then seven. Yes, sir. The, when I return the by row true, then you see the sequence has changed now. Three, twelve, five, seven in this by row. Okay. What yes, is, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Ar arrangement changed only. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. Is there anyone has any doubt? Diana, now you got it. By row, what is by row true? T for true. Yes, thank you. Sometimes we require to arrange in this way. No? It depends on the uh, your requirement. You want to arrange the matrix in this way or the that way. It, it's, it depends on your requirement. Okay, Manisha? When we work in depth, then you will get it. When it's for the requirement, we have to arrange. Okay. And uh, one more way I would like to explain you that. Suppose I am not taking the dimension names here. Okay. I'm not taking the dimension name. I just run this and this. There is no dimension name now. And uh, I have created matrix somewhere in my script. And uh, suppose I am I have created there on the uh, fifth row in my script. These are the rows of the script. And presently, I am working on 1000 something rows. And I don't want to go over there and I don't want to put again that thing. Dimension, I mean that syntax. And I want to provide dimension names. Where I am at present in the script. Okay. At that moment, what I will do? So there is a function row dot names for the row names. And I just know the name of the matrix, object name of the matrix. No, so I know the M1. And then control enter. And then in a vector, I will write the both row names, R1 and R2. And I run this. And I will show you the M1 now. Look at here in the M1. Automatically M1 got that row name. Why it is getting? So because I have written here the M1. I have mentioned the what name I want to give them. What it? Similarly, I want to give the column name also. Call names I will write, not the call dot name, only call names. Okay, uh, for the M1, and uh, I use it. Uh, see, and uh, this is uh, C1. C2. C3. 
64 and I run this now I will show you the M1 got it is there any doubt I have not written the dimension M inside the matrix function outside somewhere I have written this I have given the name from outside I have given this support from outside to the matrix Okay, I have, I hope you all got it, correct? Now in the matrix, there are few operations we have to study in the matrix. So I will explain you first few operations like uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication and uh, uh, division. Uh, this is the matrix, uh, the actual matrix multiplication is a different thing. I will tell you later on that also. But here we are getting the operations in a matrix. Operations in matrix. For this sort of operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, here the order must be same. One thing is very important. Order of matrix. must same. If one matrix is 2 by 3, others should be 2 by 3. If one matrix is 3 by 3, others should be 3 by 3. Okay. So I am getting one matrix. Understand this? The order must be same. So I just do here on the R. So we save our time. Uh, making one matrix. I know that we have one matrix 2 by 3. And another matrix I am making for the 2 by 3 and 2, 2 by 4, sorry. So the 2 by 4 matrix I am making here, I am taking the 8 elements I require, 3 plus 8, 11, 3 is to 10. Uh, I am just writing the end row. Just two. I just make it. And I will show you this matrix. So it is my second matrix. Same two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the previous matrix, you already know that 3, 10, 12, 1, and this way. Now we add these two matrix. I, without name, I will explain you this. So you could get it in a better way. And this I again run this one. So you see these two matrix here. Okay, I remove this also and again I run this. So you better understand if I would do in that way. I just run this M1 and uh, I just run M2. You see these are our M1 and M2 matrix. Okay. And I'm giving some operation, performing some operation M2. Please mute your mic. Someone's mic is open. Sorry. And I run this. Now you see it. What is happening? The 3 plus 3 is the corresponding elements it will add on. 12 plus 5 is 70. 5 plus 7 is 12 and 7 plus 9 is 16. Similarly, the 10 plus 4 is 14, 1 plus 6 is 7 and 0 plus 8 is 8 and the 4 plus 10 is 14. Does that make sense to everyone? How does it operate? Okay. Similarly, we could uh, subtract it. And is the subtraction corresponding subtraction? We could multiply this also the similar way. M1 asterisk M2. Sorry. Asterisk M2. And this is the multiplication. First element with first element, second with second. And, this way. and we could divide also. So 
this is the division we could control the after decimal digits so we could have we have a round function and i want only two decimal places well, digits after decimal only two digits are required so it is uh, controlled uh, round matrix round of matrix with two decimal places so this is our uh, matrix operation few but actual matrix multiplication is a different sort of multiplication okay uh, which is not required in the data analytics part okay So, huh, we could give an M. Do we need to assign an M to the set of the operation? So, you could leave, we give an M, any name. I give a D. Yeah, the fact time this way. You could give any name, whatever you want. Okay, then you have to run. When you run, you will not get the result on the console. But when you have you run the object name, then you get the result. Okay, that is the difference here. This is our matrix. The next data type we are going to explain. You. Uh, that is our array. We just I just introduced the array. We will not go in deep in array. In the matrix, uh, we don't have the much work in the matrix here in the data analytics part. Whenever we will require it, then I will explain later on. But here we don't have the R workshop. All the four workshop we don't require this matrix. Array. You see how to create array. And uh, for this creation. Before that, I would like to explain you something that in a matrix you want to access something. Okay. I, I show you this matrix. And here we want to access this file. How we could get this file? The same procedure we have as we have worked over there. So it is the I want to access file. So it is the first row and third column. So first I will write the row, then I will write the column. Got it? If I write multiple, then I will use some other. I write the first row. So I make some other matrix also, I explain in detail. Uh, row will display later on. Uh, matrix 4, M4. Oh, what is happening? I have a matrix. Matrix with uh, 16 elements, I am making a matrix. 11 plus 16, 27, 11 is 2, 26, and uh, I want to end row, and row is 2, here, Oh, I have two can two. I have to write the two, not one. Sorry. Four by four matrix. I want to create numbers. That's all. This is my matrix. Mm. Eleven is to twenty-six. We have the sixteen elements, and I'm making a square matrix four by four. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Now I want to I have a requirement of uh, this 12, 
this 20, 14 and 21. Okay. How could I exit this? So M4 and in a square bracket, I will use the vector for the first row. And third row, I'll show you. I will show you first what I'm going to do. I'll just take the red color. I want this one. Suppose I want this one, this one, this one, and this one. So this is my first row, and this is my third row. So I will write first the number of rows, what you require, one and third, and then number of columns, first and third column. First or fourth, I could take if I want. And I am taking only 19, so I am writing also there one is that by coincidence. Or comma. See. One comma. So. And I have this. Look at it. What it? So in this way, you could select the cluster from matrix. Okay. This is the selection of the matrix. If you want the whole, if you want the second row, complete second row. So M4, square bracket, two comma, then blank. You get the second row. Okay, you see the second row here. Uh, 12. We are getting this 12, 16, 20, 24. It's a second row. If I want a particular column, if I want a particular column, then what I will write? M4. And first I have to keep blank for our rows. Suppose I want a third column. I run this. That is the third column. 19, 20, 21, 20, 19, 20, 21, 20. Does that make sense to everyone? Is there any doubt? Okay. So in this way, we could find out the, we could access the elements from the matrix. Now we see about that. It is a function array. Array is a multi-dimensional uh, data frame. There is a row and column we have already. And just like you copy or the diary or the book, first, Every page is a matrix and there is another page, then another page. So this old book or the netbook, notebook is called the array. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. So I will explain you one array we create first then could better understand. Array. And I'm using In array, we have the syntax I explained you first. Uh, the two main attributes is the first is the data, second the dimension. 
dim. Norm the dim names. There is not a dim names. Dim names is also there, but we are taking dims. Dim would be in vector only. We require, uh, there are 18 elements. And we want to create uh, uh, with 18 elements. I could uh, create an array of uh, uh, 3 by 2 by Three. It is eighteen. Two by three. By threes, or three by three. By two. Does that make sense to everyone? So I could make this, this, and this. This is the order. Three by two matrix three times. Two by three matrix three times, and three by three matrix two times. So we see. How does it happen? Okay. First, I make it three by two by three. Three by two by three. So three by two. This is the dimension: three rows and two column. And three, one, two, three. What? Is there any doubt? And the three by two. If I use the two by three, then it, I will change it. Right to the two. I will get this two by three, three matrix of two by three. And I have three by three by two matrix. So I will write here three and I will write here two. So this is the three by three square matrix. We have two square matrix here. Got it? We don't go in deep. I just uh, tell you what is the on it. We, we don't go in deep. We don't have to see how to access the elements of this order. That will make quite worse. Okay. This is the array. Now, we see most important data type, and which is data frame. Which we used in the data analysis most. Data frame is a uh, our data object. Just like Excel sheet, you all already aware about the Excel sheet. There are the rows and columns. The similar thing is the data frame. Okay. I will show you that. We create one data frame. <clears throat> First, we see the syntax of data frame. Data dot frame. First thing is data. If you don't write the data, if you are creating a data frame, then write the where, uh, column name and uh, whatever you want. So suppose we are taking V1 and then we put whatever the values are there in that. And then second V2, V3, V4 in this way. Practically, I will explain it. We are making a DF is an object name for that frame. Data dot frame. And I am making a V1 vector. And there is a few elements I am. I will here. 
I will not take this and I will show you there. So it would be complete hurry. I want to finish this. So I will explain here. It is already prepared, so it could be we will save our time. Uh, yeah, we will share it. We will share it to the paid uh, whatever the work time uh, participants who has paid for that study material and the certificate. We will share with them. Are you? Don't worry about it. So data frame is a table or a two dimensional array like a structure in which each column contains values of one variable. And each row contains one set of values from each column. So there are few characteristics I would like to explain you. Number one is the column name should be non-empty. There should be some column name as I have given here, the V1, V2, V3. I have not just given that uh, C is equal to this and this is comma, then this is, so it will not work. I, there is a requirement of the, that uh, uh, column name should be not empty. So we when we do it, we have one. Row name should be unique. Row name. If you are going to give the row name, I am not giving the row name here. Later I will tell you what is row name. And the data stored in a data frame can be of numeric factor or character type. Each column should contain same number of the data items. Each column must, uh, each vector what we are putting here, the same number of items so would be there. So there is a V1, V2, V3, we have the five elements everywhere you see in the four vector. And the last vector is a character vector. There are the five items. Every vector has five items. So I run this. And if I show you, uh, if I print this DF, so you'll see it will look like this. This is my data frame. V1, V2, V3. Getting? Okay. And if I want to view it, it is a print. I want the view of this data frame. We just uh, write the view function. Here V is the capital. Okay. Always in mind. Keep in mind, V should be capital only. Only very few functions, V starts with capital. That is the one is the view. Most of the functions are in the small letters. Maximum of the functions. So you see this is our data frame V1, V2, V3, V4. Okay. So we could view in this way. And we could save this data frame wherever you want. That's very easy to save the data frame. So I will show you here. DF5. There's a DF5 already we have, and I just click it and I delete it from here. Okay. Now there is no DF5. So what the function we have to use for the saving a data frame? The write.csv, this is a function. There should not be any object name for this writing. Okay, we are writing no need of any object name. Write.csv, direct function. DF, whatever we have, this data frame in our R. And whatever name you want by which it should be saved with it. So it is the extension is very compulsory extension dot csv here. Also, you see the dot csv. It must be written. If you have not written this dot csv, it will not be saved. So I just run it and I will show you that data frame. So it is here. Okay, df5. If I open this df5,
is my DA file here. The CSV file always open in the Excel sheet. Okay. Is there any doubt anywhere? Sir, can you repeat it, please? What? Or oh, repeat it? Okay. Yeah. So you see, write dot CSV. In the CSV format, I am writing it. Comma separated variable format. Or it is the default format for uh, most of the languages like Python and R. Okay. There is no requirement of any library to write in this format. Okay. So it is the data frame, uh, the object name here in my R. So I will write that first and after comma, by which name? You could write any name here, you know, but extension is dot CSV. You could write DF5 instead of DF5, whatever name you want to give, you could give it. And just run it, it will be saved in the fraction of second of the system. Is there any doubt now? You could write the Excel file also. Uh, I'm deleting this Excel. Yeah, it is already. And uh, I'm using the, for the right Excel. So I have a important library, right Excel. Right Excel. So this you have to install first this package, right Excel from here. This one, you will install it. And uh, once you have to install only, then you could use it. Whenever you have to use, you have to run, import that library. So you have to write the library, right Excel only. And then you could apply it. Without running this library, if I, Right Excel function I use, then you see what happens. Error in the right Excel XCDF uh, so and so could not find the function because I have not import that library. So now I am importing the library and I am running this now. You see, it is now saved. I'll show you this here. X, Y, Z, X, L, S, 5.1 kg. 1 kb, sorry. What is Is that clear to everyone? How to write the file? Read the file, I will explain later on. They read the file, I will explain. But later on. Okay. Now we see it is a function write Excel. We are writing an Excel format. We are writing an Excel format. Here we have write that in our system CSV format. We could write in a, any format like dot .sav, like uh, size seven b that uh, any format. We could write in any format. No. Uh, we know that our data frame, I will explain you more, once more. I will show you that data frame. This is our column. Now I want to change this column. Names. Okay. So there is a names function I will use for, and the DF is the data frame name, and the column names I will write here. What? Is In a system, it is saved on the same place. I will show you that. X, Y, Z, it is the 30, 10, 20, 26, 14 PM. I open this file. Do you see this one? Sir, like just it is saved in R from there. How did you shift it to system? It is already there because it is my folder name. You see, okay. there is a project. Okay. R fundamentals. I explained you how to create a project. Yeah. So in this project folder, that file is saved. That is okay. my working directory basically. Okay. Okay. So you see where is your working directory, where it is has been saved. So you could get working directory right in this way. 
on you click on this so you will get the path here it is in which folder it is got it yes sir you could change the working directory also suppose you want to save this on the desktop okay yeah then at at that time you have to set a working directory set working directory okay yeah in course you have to write the path of that desktop so i'll okay. show you that path how we could write so uh, the desktop i think is the c drive So the next one I could take from here also. So I have to go to the desktop. So I could get I go to the desktop and I just try to copy address as text. Got it? I could take in this way also. We are not getting from here. I just uh, write here in this double quotes whatever. Paste it here. It is a desktop. If I run this, then what happens? With error, uh, desktop is not working. Yes, just, just a moment. Yeah, I know that. I want to show this thing that here we could get. I know that, but I don't want to read write it directly. So people may confuse why this is. So this is the always path for the desktop that the C users and uh, your computer name, whatever you have written in the desktop. This I will copy from here. Go to the folder, some folder. Okay. So the on the desktop I have taken this. And uh, you could write here. But the main thing is that uh, we have to use the forward series uh, instead of backward series. Whenever you will copy the path, you will get the backward series in Windows. So you have to convert all the backward series in forward series. That is very, very important. If you don't convert it, it will not work. Now I run this. So my working directory now changed. So I, how could I confirm? So I just write it and I will get the get working directory. This is my working directory. Now if I save this file, it will be saved there in the desktop. So I will show you my desktop. XYZ. Yes, sir. Look at this. 30, 10, 6, 21. Correct? Yes, sir. Or if you again want to change the directory name, uh, you could change it again. Or you just write here because I want the same directory name where my project is. I want to set my working directory there. So it is in the D format. Drive and 
I just uh, how you get this? You write this and the controls space, control then space, not it down, control space. You will get this drop down. Then control space. Then control space. This is my final destination. This is my direct mix. Got it? Is there any doubt? No, sir. Now we want to change the name in the that uh, data frame. Just a moment. Uh, I will show you again. Now this is, I want to change this V1, V2, V3, V4. I want to give the class 5, class 6, class 7, and subjects. So names is a function and the DF is a data frame name. And uh, I just run it and I will show you this. Got? You have changed the name? Any doubt? Okay. Now I want to give the row names also. Uh, there's a the row index one, two, three, four, five. I want to give here names. Some. So I will write row dot names df as we have used in the uh, matrix. And here are the vector day one, day two, day five. So I run this. And I will show you this. So now this is the day one, day two, day three, and the class. And this way I'm getting my data frame. And, uh, and now we get the structure of the data frame. Whenever we read some data frame, we first we see the structure of the data frame. The structure we see the classes of the variables. There's a name read, there's a name read, name read, and the character. But if I see the summary of DF, summary is the six point summary where we get the minimum value, the maximum value of the variable first quartile, median, mean, third quartile. Okay, the six point summary we get over here. So you see we are getting the six point summary, the minimum value. First quartile, median, mean, third quartile in the maximum value. But here in the subjects, which is a character, so here we are not getting any information. We are just getting the class is character, mod in character, length is five, but we don't, how many times signs are there? How many times in this is there? In subjects, how many times math is there? We don't know this frequency. So for the categorical variable, we require some frequency table. Here we are not getting the frequency. Table. Here we are getting okay, good summary. We are getting up to some level. We are getting the summary. But here we are not getting that. So for this, what we do, we convert that character variable in factor. Okay, so how we convert, I will explain. First, we write the data frame name, then dollar. And when we write the dollar after the data frame, we get the drop down menu where we get all the variables name and we select the variable whatever we require. So I'm, going to convert the subject as as dot factor because it is a character now character class i want to convert them in the factor i assign this as dot factor again i will write that df dollar subjects now i show you this you see the factors with three levels previously it was character now it is a factor with three levels. We have the English in the end, English, English, math, and science. Three levels. Now, if I see the summary, after converting the categorical variable in factor, I get here the table. English two times math, one time science, one time. Previously, I was getting this summary. 
you see in the difference in the summary. Getting is there any wrong? Now, sir, could you just repeat the last step? We just have converted that character variable in a factor form, s dot factor. When we have converted this and then we see the structure, we get here instead of character, we get their factor. And finally, we find out the summary, we get the table in summary, like this. How many are in this, the category frequency table. Is it clear? Sir, uh, what do you mean by the structure of data frame? I huh. missed that. Whenever you get a data frame, you could view it. You could view it the data frame here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you could print the data frame. If it is a big data frame, you could not print. Okay. Thousands of rows are there. So it would take very mm -hmm. long time. It will consume your RAM. We just view it at that moment and okay. uh, whenever we read the data the to see that uh, their structure is very very important because in the in the structure we see the nature of the or the class of the variable you see here the class of the variable is namely so okay. we could perform arithmetical operation with this variable this variable this way mm -hmm. what it yes sir and this is a this was the character previously. We have converted this in vector. So sometimes yeah. we require a factor form for uh, getting this sort of summary. Okay, so we convert them in mm -hmm. vector form. Okay. Yes, sir. Otherwise, okay. when you read the data frame, it will be default a character. Whatever the vector. categorical column, you will get in character form previously before four to five months when the previous version of r uh, when we read any file in default mm -hmm. we get the uh, factor in default when we read the whatever the categorical variable we find found it so we, we found it as a factor but uh, now they have changed because uh, when why they have changed it why they have converted uh, by default in character. The reason is that when we read the data and after reading the data, we have to manipulate the data sometimes. Understand? We have to feel the missing value. We have to find out the whatever the things. Mm -hmm. So if you have the factor form, if you have a factor, variable is in a factor form and mm -hmm. you suppose you remove something, Suppose I remove the mathematics from here. So I should have two category only. Yes. But if it is in a factor form, I will get the three levels always. In spite of that, there is math is not there. But previously it was there. I have just omitted the name, mathematics. But I have not omitted the level. Level will be same. Level will not change. Level would be 3. Understand? I will explain you that thing. Why it is very important. I just mentioned it. Uh, I take this one. Here it would break up. Uh, you know that, that data frame I... Uh, uh, maths is one kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remove that mathematics from there and I write their English. Okay. English, science and math we have. So I write their English and I see which one, where it is. It is in the second row. Got it? Yeah. Second row, one, two, three, fourth column. Second row, fourth column. So what I will do? DF. Second row. Or column. I will show you. It is the mathematics. It is showing me mathematics. In the console, you see? Yes, sir. 
at the other three levels english math and science now i am changing this i am changing this i am writing it english okay mm -hmm. run it and if you see this data frame there is english, there is no mathematics yeah so it means there are two unique values only one is english and second is science two yes. unique values and we have two unique values in this column unique values are uh, the values which are unique yeah the english has repeated many times so if if i ask about the unique values df dollar subject so i will get english and science two unique values i am getting yes how many but but levels but are levels same. are already there mathematics is a level one okay level will not change mm -hmm. what it if i convert that factor in character i will show you it means the uh, i convert here here itself i convert that again df dollar subjects as dot character it's very easy to convert in any form okay df dollar subjects now i will show you the unique values there are two unique values here we will not get any level this is not a factor i will show you the structure it is a character okay now i convert in factor i will get only two level now i will get only two level whatever i have in the character unique values that much level i will get now okay so now what I is the difference between like a factor and a character like why we change that uh, we change then what will happen a uh, factor we required if something is in a factor form then uh, because the most of the algorithm like the decision tree that all that does not uh, if you use it as a any string variable string variable like this under quotes whatever you have written the english and this all so it will it will not allow character if it is in a factor form then it will allow it means if it is a factor then we can operate uh, factor use operation. means we are giving some levels to them 1 2 3 okay it should be in the in that form 1 2 3 4 5 you see uh, i convert this and then you, you, you will see that number again df dollar subject is dot factor i will show you the structure again you see two levels so one and two getting mm -hmm. so when we work with this when we do the calculations in the decision tree or the whatever we train the model so this will work there better okay uh, this character if you write we have a very big name also it will take very long time mm -hmm. you know it will it will consume your uh, system ram and everything it will slow down the process because there is a big data if you have well, then how how could you do this mm -hmm. so internally it perform in 1 2 3 whatever the levels and final it will give the output with english and science okay okay but meanwhile in the process it will take the factor levels okay for the system it is using one or two uh, yeah but we will get the results in like english and science yeah thank you sir it, it will save the time okay okay <laughs> so uh i will tell you some more thing about the data uh, now you understand uh, what is the importance of the factor and why we convert sometimes in the character when we manipulate the data 
all the categorical variables should be in the form of character. You know? When we train something, then a square the uh, most of the algorithm requires the factor, not the character. Okay, so we again to convert them in factor. So now we see how to extract the data. So we could use the column name or we could use the uh, that uh, index of the column. If you are using the column name, don't write, don't need to write the comma. Here you have written a comma before indexing, but with the column name, there is no requirement. If you run this, you will get that column from the data frame. Similarly, if I work with uh, indexing, then I require the uh, comma first, all rows I want, the column one only want, so I will get, but I will get in this way, not what I am getting here, because is there only one. If I want the multiple columns, I will write the C combined and I will use the multiple column. For indexing, I could also use in this way, multiple columns and three, four will provide me the one value, third row and the fourth column. The value is I think that signs. And the second row, if I want day two, so it is the class four, fifth, day two. Or I could also write the name of the row. But whenever you use the naming of the row, then comma is compulsory. But with column, the comma is not compulsory. With row, it is compulsory. And we were first write down the row name, then comma. Yeah. You could change the row names also. So row names DF fifth, third, third uh, that I want to change. Here you see this is the day three. I want to write the third. So I'm writing the three here. And I will show you this. So it is the three now. What it? In this way, I could change it. And uh, there is a column, third column. Third column is here, class seven. So I want to convert them in class nine. So I could change the name of the columns. I could change the value also. I will see you the Third row and first column value is 77. You will see here. And I want to kind of substitute 57 instead of 77. So I will just run this. This already we have done earlier. So it is the 57 instead of 77. And uh, later I will tell you how to add on the rows and columns and how to match the two data frames. So So if you have to add one row and this we could add here. Yeah. So new row I'm going to add in my data frame. That new row, I know that the three columns are the new every fourth one is a character. So I will write the data in this way. I want to row, row combination I want. And there are the six or five rows. I want to the six row. I want to combine on that yeah. the row. So, and if I show you the class of this new row, so it is a vector character class. Why it is character? Because the one is character, it will convert the whole class in the character. Does that make sense to you? We have seen it earlier also. Now the function is R bind, row bind, R bind for the row bind. So in the previous data DF, I am adding a new row. And this DF is, again, I am saying with the name DF, I run this. Okay. And uh, okay, math math is not a label because we have converted them in math. So warning message factor because uh, there are two labels now. Once uh, one I have removed at that moment. So what I do, I again run that from a starting. I run it and uh, I show you again. So this is our math is again there. And I just uh, add this. Neuro. And I, I, I give the name also. I give the name also. It will be better to you. Now oh, this is my data frame. The perfect data frame. And uh, I'm going to give this neuro I'm going to add here. Okay. And you see now there is no any 
But you see, uh, when I run the structure, so now it was the new brick, now it is correct. So it disturbed everything because this whole vector was a character, as I explained you. So in the each column, when it goes, the first element goes to first column, second element goes to second column. So every element which are the character converted the whole column in the character. Now what we have to do, we have to convert them again in the numeric form. So we will use s dot numeric everywhere in the all. And then I show you this structure again. So now they are numeric. Does that make sense to everyone? Now if you see this in the data frame, you see there is a six. I want to write the day six. So what I will do? I will row dot names df six day six. I will do it. So it will be written in this way day six. And if I show the data frame here, so it is like this. Now I want to add a column, the another column for the teacher's name. Ankita Parmar, Pankaj Ankita Pankaj Parmar is the six names because the six rows are there. So it is a new column and the C bind. Here we have used the R bind function for the row bind. And here is the C bind. So DF new column. I just run this. And we see that we have this new column. Ankita Parman and this all. And the column names DF5. I want to change this name. So the call names uh, I will write in this way. And uh, again, I will show you this. So there is the teacher name. And if you see that structure, structure will be no problem with the structure. Okay. Is it clear now today? Uh, have you got it? Is there any doubt? Anyone? Anu? Sorry, Ang. No doubt? China? No? Uh, Sir? What? Yeah? Sir, uh, you, uh, so was that uh, if I have a CSV file in my desktop, yeah. then I load it and perform my task. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Just you, like hmm, yeah. Yeah? No, yeah. Please be your pardon. Uh, I have a, a CSP file in my hmm. desktop. Hmm. I, I want to run it. Hmm. I First I uh, upload the file, CSP hmm. file. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I I am to perform the task. Uh, can you show me, sir, this, this uh, procedure? Okay. Suppose you have a file somewhere else, not in this uh, folder, R fundamentals. You know? uh, sometimes we have a file some, some other place in our system. Okay, it happens. And we have to collect that file from there. And uh, first you imagine some name for the data set, what you want to give here. So I'm giving the MD, whatever you want. Can I will write the read.c? Okay. So your screen is not visible to us. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Are you getting my screen now? Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. When you have to read some data, uh, it is somewhere in your system. If it is in the same place, same folder, same project, no, no need uh, to that file choose. If I want to write, uh, read the file tt25.cs, this file, I just write the df. Any name you could give, read.csv. And in under quotes, pt 25csv extension is very compulsory to write and i just run this you see the, uh, uh, this file is now in my global environment 15 observation 7 variables if i want to view i will click here and i will view this file got it 
Yes, sir. Yes. If it is in the same project, same folder, same working directory, you know, where you are working. Suppose it is not in the same project. It is somewhere else in your system. Or otherwise, you have to set the working directory at that place. Then you could read from there. Or if you don't want to change the working directory, then the another way, whatever the file format, you write it first. Read.csv, read.excel, whatever. And then file.choose. Keep it blank and control enter. You will get one pop-up window. Sometimes this pop-up window will not show on the screen. It will be on the taskbar. Task menu. You see here. It is here. Are you getting it? In the task menu, something is. So I just click here. I get this. And suppose I have a file somewhere else. On a desktop, I have a file. So I see that on the desktop, I have a file like uh, DF file. I select this. So, so DF file, the file observation file variables. But if I click here, I will get that file. Here. Does that make sense to everyone? Is there any doubt? Very easy. Hmm. Okay, sir. Thank you. It's very easy. Tomorrow I will explain more about the data frames and the few functions we did tomorrow. Okay. Excuse okay. me, sir. Uh, yeah. yeah. In my R, I have like three columns. Yeah, you have a four, no? Uh, first one, this is for your working and then console, environment, and files one. Mm -hmm. But in my R, I am getting just console, environment, files. Uh, why I'm not able to see the upper one, the first one? This you see on the top left where my cursor is at okay. present. Here okay. you click and the R script, if you click, you will get okay, a blank sir. script over there. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, whatever the script I sent, mostly you could read that script also you have to click here in open mm -hmm. and wherever the my r script suppose this is my one r script dot r is the extension of the r script what it mm -hmm. so i just click it and open it so i will get the asdfr what it okay. so i okay. could i could do the script from anywhere using okay. this open uh, if i have the script already here in my this uh, project which i have said the working directory Okay, mm -hmm. I could direct directly read from here also, whatever the dot r file I have. Suppose I want to read this file, I just click here, it will be open. Okay. Because this working directory is already set here. Okay, because that is the project, these project files are on here. Okay. So you could use it. Okay. So I think the material of uh, day before yesterday also not sent to you uh, due to yesterday was some internet issue over there. And uh, today I will send it in the night. Okay. Or you will get the two days and the day before yesterday's session material, whatever. Anyone has any doubt? Sir, in last year added their view MD. So, sir, basically through view commands, we can read outside file, is it? Like view MD, if you put, it will be coming in global environment and from there we can get the uh, It should be in the global environment. You see okay. the MD file is in my, I will show you again that. I will share to you. The MD is my global environment. So, so only I could view it. Okay, sir, if suppose so like MD variable is not showing in global environment, then... We cannot access. We, we could not access that. Whatever you are, you could access. It should be in the global environment. Okay. okay. Then we could access it, or you could view it with, through the command viaw, or you could just click here anywhere in this row, and you will get that. Okay. Yes. So this is the simplest way to view the. Yeah, anyone else have any doubt? So some questions were, does R have different local variables and global variables like in C and other languages? 
No, that is not required, Sibasi. We are not going in that deep in this R is not required, those, those things. Okay, in Python, it is required for some time to read the functions. These all things. R, it is not required. Uh, and uh, explain me again how to save the DA files in the feed. Okay, I will explain you. But uh, tomorrow I will explain this again. And it's on IV, sir. If I lost all our data due to Windows setup, it is possible to retrieve the data. Mm, it depends. Uh, because the history will be lost if your R has uh, deleted from your system. Next is that. So always keep all the files in the D D D drive. You know? Don't write and don't keep anything the documents in the C drive. Make one folder in the D drive. So whenever you format your system, the only the C drive will be affected. You know? And the D drive will be saved mostly. Okay. Someone has any doubt now? Manpreet, Manmeet, sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, it's clear, sir. Clear, okay. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks, everyone. I think Mr. Mukesh, are you there? Mr. Mukesh is not there. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Sir, over to you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. <coughs> I think uh, today we are done. As I am informed that we have extension of one day, so uh, the workshop will end on uh, Sunday uh, rather than tomorrow. So uh, one more extra day we have because yesterday we had a gap. So all of you be ready for Sunday. And uh, uh, tomorrow is the last day to apply for the certificate. Those who want to get the certificate, make sure you apply by tomorrow for sure. Uh, and uh, make sure the payment should be done before you apply for the certificate. Certificate application is already attached with your, uh, you know, the, in the Zoom meeting, you will see there is a link. Uh, any other concern regarding payments now, feel free to contact us. We will surely help you. R2 and R3 workshop is starting on Monday. Uh, 5 to 7, we are starting R, R2 and 7 to 9, we have R3. So those who are participating in R2, make sure that you register, do the payment and get your seat confirmed. Similarly for R3, if you are uh, going for R3. So that's all for a message from our side. So let's connect tomorrow 5 o'clock and uh, uh, that's it. I think enjoy your evening. Uh, be happy. Keep smiling. Take care. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Okay. Bye for now. Okay.